Hey, welcome, 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 CISSP wannabes, Colin Weaver, IT Dojo, questions of the day, two of them at a time, here we go. Question number one today, all of the following are benefits of SSO, single sign-on, except for which? Choose two. So you're looking for things that are not benefits of single sign-on. Click pause, give it a read, pick the right answers. When you're ready, click play, we'll talk it through. Choice number one, single sign-on relieves the need for strong passwords. Um, does anything relieve the need for strong passwords? Uh, you could relieve the need for passwords, but relieving the need for sufficiently strong passwords, uh, no. So single sign-on does not do that for you. That makes that right one of the right answers here. So again, we're looking for things that are not going to be benefits of SSO, and that's one of them. Choice number two says that single sign-on enhances the ability to allow or disallow access to multiple different systems. That is very much a benefit of single sign-on. So because that's a benefit, that's not the right answer that we're looking for right now. Choice number three, single sign-on creates the capacity for seamless user workflow. Um, if you are using single sign-on, it gives users the ability to access multiple different systems to conduct whatever it is the work that they're doing and do so in a way that is much more seamless. So the users aren't constantly bothered to enter credentials and do all kinds of other things. So that is a benefit of SSO, which makes it not one of the right answers in this question. Single sign-on eliminates single points of failure for authentication. Uh, no, unfortunately that is not true. Um, now, that does not address the bigger conversation that can be had regarding single sign-on, but if you had a single server that was performing SSO related functionality for you and your network and that server were to go down, then SSO was busted. So in all the systems that were dependent upon that server being up to provide for authentication would suddenly stop being able to get authentication, therefore not authorizing users to be able to go in and do stuff. So that's a problem, which makes it one of the answers that we're looking for in this question. And then the final choice that I put on here for you was that single sign-on reduces password fatigue. Uh, password fatigue is that thing that we all experience where you have to consistently know more and more and more passwords and it's not unusual for those passwords to be obscenely complex. Uh, ten they tend to be very long, they tend to use uppercase, lowercase, special characters, numbers, etc. And because we have a bajillion different systems that we need to log into and we're supposed to have them all be different passwords, um, we don't really do that and or we should be doing that and that's what password fatigue is kind of all about so um, single sign-on helps address that issue because with single sign-on you really just have that one set of credentials and having that one set of credentials is both a positive and a negative when it comes to making arguments for and against single sign-on but um, it definitely is considered to be a positive uh, the negative aspect of having one password to sort of rule them all is that if somebody gets that password they in effect get to be you on all those different systems. So, um, uh, but that is, it, it, even though that's true, it is still a benefit of single sign-on to be able to go in and reduce the amount of password fatigue that people have. So, not one of the right answers here then. All right, next question up. I do love me some cryptography. Which of the following is a key concern for ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchanges? Huh, um, there's your answer choices. Click on pause. When you think you got the right answer, click play. Let's talk about it. Okay, choice number one says that with the ephemeral Diffie-Hellman, forward secrecy is not available. And that's simply not true. That is exactly what ephemeral Diffie-Hellman gives you. Ephemeral Diffie-Hellman generates new keys each time you do a key exchange, and those keys are used for the security of that session and then are not used again in the future. So the recovery or a seizure of a private key later down the line does not allow somebody to be able to go in and recover all of your data uh, because that key was only used for this one particular session. So forward secrecy is actually a big positive of ephemeral Diffie-Hellman. No authentication, choice number two. Uh, that is a problem. Uh, Diffie-Hellman or even ephemeral Diffie-Hellman doesn't have a native authentication component to it, 
When you want to add authentication related stuff to it, you're typically going to use additional keys and some digital signing and things like that in order to provide a mechanism of authentication. But Diffie-Hellman by itself does not address authentication. Ephemeral Diffie-Hellman and Diffie-Hellman in general, static Diffie-Hellman, address the exchange of secret keys, not um, the authentication surrounding it. Uh, weak encryption. Uh, Diffie-Hellman is widely regarded to be very excellent um, as it relates to uh, encryption, so uh, I'm sure there's some super smart mathematician who would want to raise their hand at that point, but for all of us mere mortals going in and making use of cryptography on a daily basis, using ephemeral Diffie-Hellman is considered to be excellent. All right, and the last choice, uh, long-term private key uh, exposure would allow for the viewing of all data? No. Um, if this were static Diffie-Hellman, that would be a true statement. But because we're talking about doing ephemeral Diffie-Hellman, remember ephemeral is just a real fancy word for temporary. So when we do ephemeral Diffie-Hellman key exchanges, we generate key pairs, we use them for this session, and then those keys are not going to be used again. Your long-term keys, your static keys, can be used for signing those exchanges and things like that, which can provide for a mechanism of authentication. But the ephemeral keys that you're used are done on a per-session basis. What this means is that if somebody gathers data over a long period of time and then somehow gains control of the private key in the future, um, that private key, that long-term private key, would not be able to be used to recover any of the data because that key was not involved in the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. At most, your long-term key in that scenario would have been involved in the signing of the stuff to provide a mechanism of authentication. And so that's one of the reasons why we always you know, sort of look to enhance the security of uh, data connections by using ephemeral Diffie-Hellman to give us forward secrecy rather than just using your static or long-term uh, key pairs uh, because those aren't going to be as secure should somebody be able to get their hands on your private key at a future date. Cool. Done. Two more questions down. Hope they help you. Questions, ask me in the comments below. I got some links down below that go in and provide some references, some additional information if you want to do some more reading on the stuff that we talked about in these questions. Uh, but check all that stuff out down there. And again, if you're digging these videos, please click on the like button. I appreciate it when you do that. And it's also cool if you subscribe because uh, I do these questions um, as often as I can. And I always do them two at a time. So until then, see you again.